Hey guys, and welcome back. This morning, our neighbor came over with his excavator and gave us a huge hand by helping us lift these heavy beams into place. I told Melissa I'd do it myself, but I figured the excavator is probably a better option. Yeah. The purpose of these beams is to support our load-bearing walls, so this actually runs the width of both of our load-bearing interior walls. These engineered beams are actually nine and a half inches in height and five and a half inches in width. So the first thing Melissa and I are gonna have to do are get these things set exactly where it is they need to be. Because they were delivered to us and they're actually a little longer than we needed them to be, once they are set in place, we're gonna take some measurements and cut off the excess that we don't need. Once our beams are cut to length, we are going to be adding some four by four posts directly underneath each beam in the pony wall, just for some added structural support. All right, so first things first, Melissa and I are actually gonna to have to get these things set exactly where it is they need to be. Then we need to slide this entire thing down to account for the rim joist that's gonna be placed um, on the outer edge of our mud sill here. All right, mom, let's do this, get to work. Uh, so how are we moving these beams again? <laughs> well, most of these stubby little legs may be stubby, but they're actually much stronger than they appear to be. So I'm going to get under here, get a shoulder under here. We only have to move it a couple of inches for the time being. So get in here, pick it up, scoot it, and hopefully that works. You want me to get you a step ladder? Yeah, please. Hey, Eli, you want to help me move this beam real quick? Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. With both of our beams set in place, Melissa and I have uh, taken into account the width of our rim joist and we're putting a mark here on the beam. We wanna make sure that we end up inside of that mark so that we have enough space to not only get this beam set, but also um, secure and install our rim joist. Now I know what you're thinking. That is a ridiculous saw to be using to cut this giant beam. And you're right, but it's all I've got. So that's where we're going. With. You're going to be so buff at the end. Massive triceps. Jeremy's going to get a step stool. Bring back the pretzels. As you wish. Well, Jeremy's up there sculpting one of those little bears out of that beam. I want to talk about my snack belt choice today. It is too large to actually fit in my snack belt. So I'm just going to carry it around. It's the Dots pretzels. They're from North Dakota, which is where I went to school, and I've actually never tried them. They were sent over to us from a subscriber, and we got the original flavor, which our kids have pretty much already gone through that bag. And these are the Southwest seasoned ones. They're like a mix of pretzels and salsa. They're fabulous. So close. <gasps> But think of the money you're saving on your gym membership. You like them? Good. All right, here we go. Beam number two. Numero dos. Now that we got our beams cut to length, we are going to get some posts set within our pony walls underneath each beam. We got our four by four posts cut, but because there are a few nuts that come out of the bottom of the pony wall where those posts need to go, we need to drill a couple holes in the bottom of them. But first we need to get our compressor and our nail gun and try to figure out how we're going to extend our power all the way over to the building site. Let's see if we need some off-road tires. So far so good. Come on. It is still a couple days until actual spring arrives, but this weather is unreal. We've been so blessed with dry, sunny, 
55 degree weather. The ground is finally drying out. Unfortunately, rain is in the forecast, but we're hoping it doesn't mess it up too much. Jeremy was actually able to come in here with the tractor and grade out the garden and this whole area so it looks so much better and we're not sinking. Will it reach the age old question? Oh. Oh. No, don't do share. <laughs> I'm just sharing my share impression with you. <laughs> Again, bring it back. Times two. Well, I'll give you your dreams. Here's your mama. As I can. And I'll clean up the dishes and the pots and the pans. And I promise to hold you. And I promise to dance. Beams have been set in place and trimmed to length. We also got the posts installed on our pony walls. Melissa and I are moving on and we're gonna get our first rim joy set. But before we do that, we need to uh, snap a chalk line. Let's do it. Built of love, never break. Well, I'll take you to England and I'll take you to Spain. I'll take you to places with the funniest name. Time for our first rim joist. For granted everything that we have. No, I promise to never do that. Now I might be getting older. All right, progress is the name of the game. We managed to make a lot of it here today. Checked a bunch of boxes off of our to-do list. Yep. Running out of light, however, and uh, we need to go cook dinner for the kiddos. Yeah, you gonna cook me some meat? I guess I am. We've made will never fade nor lie. Built of love oh, oh, oh. will never break. All right, guys, what do you want for dinner? Steak for me. I want Sammy. Definitely steak. Chicken nuggets. No. Lamb chops? Rude. Fine steak and steps. Boy, has sophisticated taste. I know that everyone's daily routine looks different, but for me personally, balancing the home build, homeschool with the kids, and growing our homestead, and then trying to get a good, healthy meal on the table that everyone's gonna love gets a little tricky. So I love having ButcherBox in my corner. ButcherBox believes in better. For them, better means caring about animals and our planet. It means improving the livelihoods of farmers. Ultimately, it means better meals and joy together. It's why they deliver 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised crepe-free, wild-caught seafood, 
and more directly to members' doors. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards for quality. You choose your box and delivery frequency. They offer five boxes, four curated box options, as well as the popular custom box so you get exactly what you and your family love. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at the peak of freshness and packed in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box. So let's face it, we're not eating scallops and filet mignon every night and that's where the ground beef comes in. It's versatile, it's 100% grass fed and grass finished. And it's also free for all new memberships. Sign up today to get your two free pounds of 100% grass fed ground beef free in every box for the lifetime of your membership. Why do you have that? I like beef. In the morning we woke up to our first you giving birth. Everything with the delivery went very quickly and smoothly. But as soon as the lamb was born, the you just got up and walked away. I stood back and observed and waited for about 15 minutes, hoping that she would return to the lamb. Finally, the lamb started to shake, so I needed to step in. Okay, well, I guess I'm cleaning the baby up since she's not. Once I got the lamb warmed up and dried off, I put her back out in hopes that the ewe would return to her, but she didn't. We got mama trapped inside the house and I'm gonna put the baby back in there, but she's not cleaning it. She's kind of sniffing at it, but what I'm giving it now is some colostrum gel. They need this right after birth if they're not getting it from their mamas. And so far she is not letting her nurse, so. To be safe, we're gonna give this little girl Oops, making a mess. I came out faster than I thought. But in order for her to have a really good chance at survival, we need Mama to start nursing her because we do not want a bottle baby. Well, it was a very long morning. It was very exciting. And then it was very disappointing. <laughs> we tried really hard, but mama has zero interest in her. And when we try to stick them together because you can shut them together and then the mom really has no chance or no choice, but to kind of bond with the baby, she started to ram her and attack her. And we were really afraid that she was gonna get hurt. So it's just a no-go. So, Plan B is we're going to be doing the homeschool farm edition of the flower sack or the egg. Remember in home ec when you had to carry the egg around and you couldn't break it? So let's hope Miss Nevaeh here doesn't get a D in her home economics project. You going to keep the baby alive? I'm going to try. <laughs> she can do it. Now that Nevaeh has her home economics project all under control in the form of a baby lamb that's hollering over there, we are going to get back to work on our home foundation. We need to lay out where our first set of joists are gonna go. Yeah, we're using BCI joists. We're gonna get, we're gonna bring eight of them out and get started with it. Um, we need to mark our layout. The reason we're stopping at eight for the time being is that we have a hatch that's going in the floor so that Melissa and I can access the crawl space we need be. Right. All right, these BCI floor joists are full length. They're going to run the full span, the full width of our home site and the home foundation. On either end, they're going to be supported by the actual foundation walls. In the middle, they will be supported by the pony walls that we've already got set in place. They are nine and a half inches in height, which means that they should mesh perfectly with the beams that we already got set in place. And because they came to us a little long, I went ahead and built this jig to where once we determine where it is we need to get things cut, we can set this jig up between the two flange portions of the joist and get everything cut using our circular saw. So 
we got two of the joists set and then realized that the rough cut edge was on the wrong edge. So we're actually going to be flipping the tractor around so we can actually be putting the proper edge over there and not have to manually turn them like we just did. Much better. We got all the joists on and measured correctly. So now we have rolled them to make them easier to cut and we're going to get them all cut to length. So down the road, when Melissa and I actually need to access this crawl space that you see back here behind us, we have no means to really do so once we have a floor put on. So what that means is we're gonna have to build out a little hatch. It'll have a cap cover that we can pull up and then make our way down into the crawl space. So what that means is we need to get a series of joists cut to length. Uh, we have a diagram to actually work off of. The hatch is gonna be about right there. It'll be set up in our master bedroom closet once it, everything's done and finished. So for today, rim joist, get that hatch built, and then uh, we'll move on at that point. Yeah, then that whole wing will be joisted. Benito. <laughs> it is a little colder today, actually a lot colder today. Definitely windier, so we are gonna hurry up and complete this task. So now comes the task of actually assembling this little hatch door that is going to go down into our crawl space. So we have two full length joists to put on each side and then we will start assembling it. This is kind of a tricky task because the directions sort of look like Ikea directions. They're just like a bunch of pictures and sticks and lines and some numbers. So we were just joking, it's the Ikea dresser from hell. It's not as windy down here. No, oh, just stay down here. I know. Like little cave people. Little fort. Come on down. Who ordered some shims? Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if we're gonna shim it. Shim shimmery, shim shimmery, shim shimmeru. This one is low, so we'll shim it up too. Shim shimmery. No? No. Beard. I'm jealous. You do have some hairy, bushy eyebrows as well, though, so that's a drawback. But the beard? You've got the goat beard oh, going on. I do. <laughs> oh, she wants you. <laughs> do you want me to put her in the baby Bjorn for you?
All right, we have reached the point where we are gonna get set up with this last portion of our hatch framing. It's gonna be the backside. We're using the same I-beams uh, to make up this span here. So I brought our 14 year old daughter, Nevaeh, out to come help me. She was stuck inside all day. I was kind of tired of that. So brought her out here so we get some fresh air and help her mom and dad. So that's where we are. Ah. That's why I told you to move. Take this on, put it on the back side. Be oh, the best is on YouTube. No. Shameless plug. No. All right, so we went ahead and completed our hatch section. It actually ended up being three feet long by two and a few inches uh, feet wide. So it's a nice space. It'll be tucked away in the very back corner of our master bedroom closet, like we mentioned before. We had, because we had to use all these hangers, these hangers are not ideal. I don't know why they come from the factory the way they do, but they're really tough to work with. It's hard to get the joist seated all the way down to the bottom. Um, and now that I walk on it, there is a little bit of a creak, which I'm not too concerned with because again, it is in the corner of our master closet so not a real big issue we have two more joists to get set so we'll uh, cut those and get those installed and then we're done with this portion done does it look like a house yet no so like jeremy said those hangers were a royal pain they sucked up a big portion of our afternoon just putting that hatch in but it is in it looks really good we just have this tiny little section to do we're tired we're starving. It's six o'clock, but we're not stopping till we get those two joists in place. Almost done. This week was full of surprises and of course, long days. We anticipated that those two large beams were going to be a major hurdle, but thanks to some good neighbors, they were no problem at all. What we didn't expect was a tiny bummer lamb born at the start of our flooring adventures that would require around the clock care, nor something as simple as a few joist hangers to slow us down in the way that they did. This week was good. This week taught us that this build is going to be full of delights and unforeseen obstacles. We have full faith that things will work out. Maybe not as we drew them up in our minds, but always as they should.